Do you need to create surveys for your business? Have you tried maybe using SurveyMonkey, Google Forms or some other type of survey software? My name's Angie King and in this short video, I want to show you how easy it is to create stunning, powerful, responsive surveys using MailChimp. MailChimp has just released a, a creation of surveys as one of the options within the product. And within it, you can create powerful surveys. You have choices of different question types. You can easily look at the responses easily and easily share it out. Let me show you how easy it is. I'll just share the screen and you'll notice that I already have MailChimp open. So to start the creation of my survey, I will go to the toolbar at the top of the screen and click on the left hand side option that says create and then about halfway down the list I'll choose the option that says survey. From here I need to choose my audience. Now if you have your free version you would only have one audience to choose from. If you have a paid version then you would have a multiple to choose from. So we choose our audience and then click on begin. Our survey is going to be for an event. So we're going to pretend that we ran an event and this is the after event survey. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to add some questions. So you'll notice that we can add questions and we can also design it. So we do have some control over how our survey looks. So let's add a question. And before we do, we need to name our survey. So you'll notice I actually have a number of these already already typed up for us so I can just copy and paste to make it quicker. So we're just going to call it our post event survey. If it was your own personal one, you would make it obviously a lot more descriptive than that. Now we have our questions. Now there are a number of questions. What would we like to ask? If I just click on that, you will notice that it comes over on the right hand side with a little dialog box that shows you the different types of questions that you can choose. So the answers can be radio buttons, they can be checkboxes, they could be open text, they could be a range from zero to 10, or you could have an email. So let's go through each one and I'll explain how they all work. First one are the radio buttons. Radio buttons are the round options you have, the cho choices that are round. In general terms, computing worldwide, if you see the round buttons, that means you only can choose one of those options. So let's put in our question. So our first question is, did we feel that the event length was right? So I'll pop that in. So, and then we've got our options. So option one is that the event was too long. Option two is that it was too short. And option three, is that it was just right. Okay, so that's our first question done. Our second question, so let's click on add a question. Let's look at the second option down, which is the check boxes. Check boxes are when we have the square boxes. And when you see the square boxes in, a, in computing anywhere at all, what that actually means is that you can choose more than one option. So in this case, we're going to be asking which elements of the event did the person like the most? And so you'll see here that I'm just going to be choosing. So they have a choice. There were five elements and I'll just choose. Let's just pop them in. Oops. There we go. So you'll see then we have the range of different checkboxes. The next type of question is open text. So this is where people can type in the answer. Oops, we didn't want to do that. So we're going to go back to checkboxes and you'll see that the elements are still there. So what we need to do is click on add a question. Now we can choose open text. So see how easy it is to move from one different type to another. So our question is, what ahas or significant moments did you have during the event? And then our answer will be going in here. 
And the last type of question, so let's click on that. The next one is a zero to 10 range. So our question would be overall, how would you, would you rate the event? We set out, we set our, um, our low, a low range label. Could be better and to perfect. Something like that. So you can see there that we can, we can have different types of questions. We can also have an email type, which means that the person is required to put their email address in. The other options you have is that you can say whether or not you want that particular question to be required. And on some of the options, you'll notice if we go into that question, there is another option. So they could choose if you have choices of things and there's something else, they can then free range and free type into the other field. Okay, so these are our, our, our questions. This is our questionnaire. And what we'll do now is let us go over and start to design it. So the first part is, so this is our, our survey. And the first part is let's look at customizing it. So branding, we can include a logo. If you've already set up a default logo within MailChimp, when you click on include logo, you'll see that it will automatically appear, but you can obviously change the logo and place, it, place something else there. Uh, by going into the content studio and selecting the new logo. You can then add a description, letting people know what the, what the survey is about. So I've just typed in something here. So thank you for attending the event. We really appreciate any feedback you can give us. Custom messaging is the next part we can customize. So You'll notice that the button the sub, is the submit button. And in this case, it's green. We have choice over the color. We'll look at that in a moment. But let's look at the, the text. Now, if you'd like it to stay submit, then we can just leave it like that. Otherwise, if you'd like it to be something else, then you can um, change that just by typing it in. I'll just type in submit just so that you can see what it is. Once they have typed in and pressed that button, what message do you want to give them, if any? There is a default message, but what I'm going to do is choose choose the message that I've already got set up and paste it in. So thank you for your feedback. Have the most amazing and abundant day. So you can see how easy it is to create the survey. And the last one here is if the survey has closed, then you can have a message that you would give them. Lastly, you can change the colors. So the background color at the moment, you'll notice is this gray color. So let's change it. So we can click on that and just remove it, highlight it, and just say we want to have a pale blue. I could click on blue and just make it paler. Of course, if you've got your own branding colors, then make sure you pop the branding color code inside those labels. The, this is now the color of the button. So let's say we make it orange. So I'll just delete that and choose orange. And then we have the button text color, which we'll leave as white. So we've now created our lovely survey. So it's time now just to click on save and close. We can now turn it on. So by turning it on, what that actually means is that it becomes active, all right? So it becomes published so that we can share the URL for that particular survey out so that people can respond. So to turn it on over on the right hand side, you'll notice there's an option that says turn on. So I've just clicked that, slide it over, it's now turned on and we have a URL and we can view the page. So I'm gonna view the page in a new tab just so that we can look at it to make sure it's okay before we send it out. So you can see there's our lovely survey. We have our logo, our text. We have our different question types. So we're, it's nice and blue. We're all set to go. So I'll go back to the editing. We did copy the URL, so I'll just select it again. And now if I go to a new tab, 
you'll see here that I can paste it in and here is a survey. Now this time I can actually respond to the survey. So if I say it was just right, which elements did I like? One, three and five. Did I have an aha moment? You'll notice we have up to a thousand characters that people could type something in. So I'm just gonna say, love the introduction. And how would I rate the event? Let's just say as a nine. And then I'm going to submit it. There's our post survey result. And if I now come, now come back into MailChimp, and just refresh the screen, you will notice that I now have one person who has responded and I don't know who it is. And you'll see that I have all of the responses and it tells me what they are. And I can click on them to find out the actual answers that that person has put in. All right, now let's go back to the survey. You can also share your results and you'll see that you can share the survey with email and there's two different options. One is if you do not want people to know, you want it to be completely random, completely anonymous, then you can use the bottom link. If you would like it to be um, an automatic so that it tracks their responses and their, with their email and everything, then you can use this one. So you have two, whether you want it to be anonymous or whether you don't. Second part is you can share it on Facebook. So you then have a choice as to which, which area in Facebook you're sharing it. Is it to your personal profile? Is it to your business pages, for example? Is it in a group? So you have a choice there as well. And if you use Twitter, you can share that. So that's how easy it is to create stunning surveys within MailChimp. And you'll notice I just clicked on view all responses and you'll see now that is telling me what my responses are so that I'll easily be able to gauge how, how effective my event has been. So have the most, I'll stop my share, have the most amazing and abundant day. Let me know how you get on. Um, the survey is so easy to do. I'm sure that you will find it so easy. If you do have any questions about creating the survey, please let me know. Pop a, pop a question below the link of, the, of this video here. Send me a message. I'd love to hear from you. Have the most amazing and abundant day. Bye.